sex. These are the nemesis of uh, most of our growers. There are several that can cause lots and lots of issues. And if you have grown even one squash plant, um, most likely you have had problems with uh, these insects. Cucumber beetles. So we have um, spotted cucumber beetles and we also have the striped cucumber beetles. Uh, so they feed on the plant. Uh, you can see um, this squash blossom. This I took in the drought in 2012. That was the worst insect year as far as cucumber beetles that I have ever seen. So, so most of my squash blossoms looked like this with cucumber beetles. Uh, and because it was a drought year, uh, I wasn't going to get any fruit anyway, so I was not working at controlling them. So one of the reasons cucumber beetles are extremely important to control is that not only do they cause feeding damage, they can also carry a disease called bacterial wilt. Uh, so, so these plants at the bottom were infected with bacterial wilt, and uh, once they are infected with that disease, they cannot be saved. You need to remove them from the, the patch. So that's why cucumber beetle control is extremely important because it only takes one in order to carry a disease problem around. Typically when I put up this slide, I can't hear you all, but uh, everybody groans. So squash bugs, sometimes these are confused with stink bugs, uh, but they are a little longer than stink bugs. They have a piercing sucking mouth part, so like a, a big straw. And that's why the damage, you can actually see the, this spot here and um, the, these lighter, sandier colors on this leaf. Um, that's from the piercing sucking uh, actions. They're, they're sucking out the plant juices. So their eggs are the, these red close together eggs um, on the undersides of leaves a lot of times. If they are in clusters like this, squash bugs, and I just noticed over here that these are spaced out. Most likely those are our um, squash vine borer eggs. Uh, so, so multiples. Uh, they, they go through small size when they just hatch, as you can see, and then gradually get bigger. Uh, smaller like these are much easier to control um, with insecticides than once they get to this adult stage. Adult stages are very, very hard to control with any type of insecticide. So, and the other thing is they're not only causing damage on the leaves and they can completely kill plants, uh, they can also be on the fruit and cause damage on the fruit too. Uh, another one that I really dislike is squash vine borer. So the adult is this little pretty moth, uh, but if you see this flying around, uh, you better beware. Uh, so what they do is they lay their eggs and then at the base of the stem, uh, the, those larvae hatch and uh, are inside this stem and they disrupt the flow of, of water and nutrients. Uh, so this was a volunteer um, squash that I had come up last year and I'd been watching it. And uh, since it was out by itself, all of a sudden it started wilting. So when I went uh, to look and see what was going on, uh, this is what the stem looked like. And uh, there were three, you can see the head of one of the larvae there. There were three larvae in that stem and uh, it was beyond saving. Uh, sometimes if I'm creative and, and in a small patch, uh, I can go out with a pocket knife if I uh, happen to um, see one starting to wilt and can uh, cut out that larva. And sometimes they will heal, which is what happened here. I've also heard of using uh, pins and other different uh, methods, uh, your favorite torture technique. Uh, and another one, this was one I pulled the, that you could see the, the plant wilting and in that stem is, is the larva, the boar. Uh, the reality with these is they are hard to control with insecticides because once they are inside that stem, we can't get to them. Uh, so, so in some cases I play a numbers game. They can't get them all. And in, in commercial production, that's how we kind of have to think about it. There, there's going to be some loss 
And it's also trying to control those adult moths or those eggs when they are laid. Aphids. So um, typically I don't have problems with aphids, but they can be an issue. Uh, one year I did have quite a bit of problems with aphids. So you can actually see the aphids on this leaf. The leaf looks very distorted and that's because of the heavy aphid feeding. And actually there were some other plants that you could just tell underneath these were all black from the honeydew from the aphids. They grow a black sooty mold, uh, but uh, it was late in the season. I was not going to worry about trying to control them because pretty much I had what I needed. And it was fascinating to see. You can actually count four ladybug larvae on this leaf. Uh, going after all of those aphids. So it was fun to watch because I wasn't working at controlling them. The natural enemies came in and worked on it for me. Uh, this is one I uh, actually been seeing in the last few years. Uh, the first call I got was probably about three or four years ago um, saying that they had uh, it looked like a potato beetle, but it wasn't striped eating their uh, zucchini leaves. And uh, until I got pictures, I really wasn't sure what they were talking about. And then I went home and actually found some on my plants. Uh, so this is a squash beetle. And uh, there is a closely related uh, called a Mexican bean leaf beetle. Uh, but they have a different number of spots and a different, num or a different preferred food source. Uh, so uh, it makes the, the feeding uh, of the larva makes these kind of window panes and odd shapes in the leaves. And this is what the larva looks like, um, just kind of a, a, a slug with lots of black hairs on it. Uh, and then those adults are actually have chewing mouth parts and uh, do chew through the leaves. So insect control, it's really um, what you're looking at, how many you're looking at controlling. You can handpick sticky traps, the trap crops that Clement talked about in his insect class, uh, particularly with um, a lot of these trap crops do work because the um, several of the insects, particularly squash bugs, really like blue hovered squash. Uh, so you can plant those early and around your planting in order to control the insect issue on those trap crops and not your desirable crops. Uh, row cover can be effective, um, particularly on some of the summer squash uh, because they, they are bush, not vining. Uh, so basically row covers are providing a barrier in order to, to keep the insects out, but the caveat to that is, remember, we have to have insects to pollinate them. Uh, so, so that pollination is important and we have to have those insect pollinators. So, so row covers work for a while, unless you can figure out how to introduce some of the pollinators into those uh, low tunnels a lot of times. And there are some, some different ways to, to think about that and do some of that. Crop rotation. Uh, can also help um, with that and removing that crop uh, residue at the end of the season uh, because of a lot of our insects and also disease problems uh, can overwinter in that crop refuge. Uh, so so um, rotation and, and destroying that, that crop uh, residue is very helpful. We have quite a few insecticidal options that work well. Of course, refer to the Midwest Vegetable Production Guide uh, uh, for specific options. The other really important thing to think about when we're talking about insect control is our pollinators. So uh, the reality of our squash and pumpkins is they bloom early in the morning. Uh, so those blossoms are open. They are usually closed by noon. So ideal time to spray insecticides is in the evening uh, when all of those blossoms are closed. So therefore the bees are not uh, present and we, we don't wanna harm our pollinators because they're the whole reason we have a crop. Uh, so, so definitely make sure you're looking at that when you're looking at insecticidal options and timing. And the Midwest Production Guide goes into some more information on that.